All right, Kimi, welcome back. <laughs> Hello, thank you for having me. Yeah, so you really inspired me after the last video uh, where we did the geo visualization of the um, cholera outbreak. So I thought I'd give it a whirl and try out geo visualization in like a very small project uh, of mine. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. And I'm looking forward to see. Yeah, so as you know, Kimi, like we're working in a hospital and it's a really special hospital. It's really old. So it was built um, in the beginning of the 20th century and 1922, it was actually open. This building structure is really weird also for the time because it's a really, really long building. So we have three buildings. Actually. The longest hospital in Germany, I heard. Exactly. And <laughs> the special thing is it's basically three buildings next to each other and it has a ginormous floor. And this floor is inside and longer than a kilometer. But it's really inefficient to transport a patient from this ward to this ward because you have to walk a really long time. Oh, I see. So in the beginning, there was just one main building. Exactly. And then it grew from there because the hospital was still too small. So they had to add additional um, buildings to it. And this happened in waves. So this is the map of the hospital and I try to draw it. So this is basically the old hospitals. Then they started to build more stuff in the 70s. So for example, the emergency room here. And here's some buildings. And then in the 90s, they even built like two arches here and here. And here are all like the specialized hospitals, for example. Wow. So building crews organically over time. <laughs> now it's really complex. You definitely get lost. Exactly. And the main issue is that basically there's no way of you to go from here to here without crossing some building or you really get lost. So therefore, this is what happens. So our institute is here. We are very close to the west entrance. And what usually happens is uh, people ask us for the way all the time. It's really difficult to explain how to go anywhere. And um, just to talk, take like the most important examples. Imagine you start here of the west entrance and you really need to go to the emergency room, right? Mm -hmm. um, the only way which you manage it is you, if you go here, then you go inside the building into this kilometer long floor and then you go, go, go. And there are always doors going up and there is once a door coming up this, which is, looks really... Um, uninspiring or unimportant and there goes the uh, stairs down and if you miss this door you're basically lost because you go 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 and you can never recover so basically yes, that you... corner is kind of hidden yes exactly and it doesn't look like it's such an important uh, pathway and so if you go here you're lost if you go in this direction you're also lost because you have to go around all this building to then come back and this is uh, really unintuitive. Mm. So, and to help these poor people out, I decided to build like a short navigator. And um, my goal is basically to do three things, right? So first I want to display um, the building. They're going on like our open street map. And secondly, I want to display the way they have to go from their current location to the building they want to go to and thirdly there should be some interactivity so of course they need to select the building they actually want to go oh i see so you're gonna create an interactive navigator and i think this would be really helpful for the patient searching for the department especially for the emergency department exactly let's take a look <clears throat> let's take a look so here I started again with the Jupyter Notebook. Um, this is uh, this Google Colab book. Um, and now I will execute all the cells. Um, under the video description, you can also find the link to the Jupyter Notebook and you can also interact with it. Just click here, run all cells and it basically initialize everything. It should be running just fine. All right. <clears throat> so um now let's get started um here 
Um, we start mm -hmm. with some import statements again, uh, like last time. So first we import again the libraries which we need to um, work with this uh, map. And this is uh, Folium, right? And then mm -hmm. I also import certain other things which I need for this application. One is a widget, one is an operating system interaction library, and one is this GeoJSON library. So, okay. Um, if you want to know more about um, how to uh, how geo coordinates work, you can also check out our old video um, where we basically explain what longitude and latitude is. Um, and now the first thing is I uh, load certain data out of our repositories with this thing because I created certain uh, resources first and this is something we really need. So, okay. now let's get started. First, we just draw the map, right? We initialize. Oh, that's map. the same as we have done for the cholera exactly. visualization. Library. And what we do is uh, we just define uh, longitude and latitude where the map is centered and then uh, we draw the map and we basically give a zoom level and uh, how it should be displayed and here you basically see the hospital mm -hmm. now we have a map exactly so now um, we need the outlines right we need the outlines for all the buildings so um, how do we do that how do you get this data yeah so this is a lot of handwork but Luckily, there's a tool for it. It's called uh, geojson.io. It's a free website. Mm -hmm. You can just open it. And um, with this, we basically create a shapefile. And the shapefile is um, in this geojson format. And what we actually do is we take here this drawing tool, and then we can basically mark the outlines of all the buildings. In this case, I show like house uh, 22. And then if I come around, it basically says, okay, the shape is finished. And then it's the content of the GeoJSON file, which is just a text file containing basically this. And if you look... Oh, that's very useful. Exactly. So I see four coordinate of this block shape. Exactly. And each of this uh, coordinates is one um, point in this uh, rectangle. So here we can mm -hmm. also download it as a GeoJSON file. And uh, that's basically it. Then usually uh, I renamed it. And um, what I then did is I did that for all the houses, for all the different um, we want to draw on our map. And I just saved them um, in a folder called uh, Geo Resources. This Geo Resources is part of our repository. And uh, you can also check out the GitHub link. And basically, it just contains the text files for each of these outlines of all the houses. And I just named them house three or house whatever, right? Wow, so you manually collect 42 house coordination. And I think that must have been a lot of work. Yeah, so it was a lot of work, but um, it's actually also a really satisfying feeling drawing on maps. <laughs> And I think it's also uh, not uncommon. You spend a lot of time for data collection and data preparation. People spend 70 to 80% of the time when they're doing data science project. So I think it's easier maybe. Exactly. But it's worth it. So, um, mm. and then what I can now do with it is I can give basically a location of our house, basically house uh, 22, it is in the hospital navigation folder, geo resource folder, and then house 22. I load the file and then I just display on the map with this uh, command. And what you can see here is now the outline I created earlier is now displayed on the map. Oh, nice. Pretty cool. Exactly. So now the second thing we need is we need the path to this house right mm -hmm. for that i use um, the on path um, function uh, and the thing here is again um, we need to first define these ways and for that i again 
uh, use uh, this website. Okay, now let's say we want to go to this house 22, right? Mm -hmm. So I will do this a bit shoddy now, but it's just for the principle. So now I just define the way how you need to walk based on my experience, unfortunately. <laughs> Uh, what's basically the best way to this building. I can then here draw the path, how the patient should uh, walk. So, and then I again get the coordinates, right? Oh, now we have more coordinate. I think this is every corner you pick it up when you draw the path. Exactly. And okay. Uh, what is also important is that it has um, direction. So this coordinate is basically this first one and this is the second one and so on. And this is important because we want to also display a direction, right? Mm -hmm. So then I can also uh, download it as a GeoJSON file again. So now we have a small issue. So this um, pass function, it can actually operate only on a list of variables, right? So okay. now we need to do data preparation. We need to basically define a function that transform the GeoJSON format into the list format. This is what we did here. Um, mm -hmm. First, we also need to define a helper function because in GeoJSON, uh, the longitude and latitude um, is on a different position than in the actual list. So we need to switch the position of longitude and latitude um, variables. So now um, we uh, basically have this uh, finished. We first load the file, then um, we extract the list of coordinates and then we just switch the position of these coordinates. And in the end, we get a list of lists and this nested list basically is just two numbers and the numbers are like longitude and latitude, right? And order matter. Exactly. So now we can just copy paste this list in th this and path function and mm -hmm. add it to the map. And what you can here now see is that we get this very nicely animated uh, path through the hospital. I like it. <laughs> Exactly, and it also gives directionality. So it's really clear that the little ants run from the beginning to somewhere else, right? I see. Nice. And how can we combine all the things together? And how to, do we make it interactive? Yeah, so like, like first let's look at the interactivity, right? For that, mm -hmm. I um, show you the widget function, which gives you basically an interactive element uh, in Python. So basically, this is here a field where you are given different options and you can select them. So for this to happen, you need to define certain things. So you first need to define the options you need to give. You also need to define the pre-selected value. Um, in my example, I have only two options, option A, option B, right? And I set mm -hmm. the default on option A. And then I also need to uh, define a function. And this function is basically the function this widget calls when someone clicks on a selection. And this functions then receive uh, the options the user selected, right? So I de define a function here, select option, and then I need to also uh, give a variable. And this is basically the variable this widget is gonna fill with our options. So this option in our case is either option A or option B, and I then can handle it. What I did in this really simple example is, um, first, I check which option was selected, right? And then mm -hmm. I just print out um, A if option A is selected or I print out B if option B was selected. And then I need to basically wire the function together with the widget. This is done here. Uh, you just uh, use the library for that. You define here the function and then you define here the widget and you define also the variable the widget uh, will hand over basically. I see. So I see IPy widget packages you imported in the beginning and now we are creating a HTML component and make it interactive. Exactly. And I can now also show that it works. So if I uh, use option B, you see here, um, it prints B. It's basically. printing option B. Yeah. Nice. If I do A again, it prints A again. 
So this is the interactivity we need, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Now we need to bring everything together, right? All right. So we can make a um, selection box for our hospital houses department and also starting point. Exactly. And for that, we use a class. And a class is a really neat thing because you can bundle things together that belongs together. And this is certain variables and certain functions which work with these variables. So the variables we need are basically um, things we need to keep in mind to actually draw the map. And in our case, um, this is uh, the geo resources. And um, this is done via a dictionary that contains the passes to all the geo resources we defined. And um, mm -hmm. then we need the location of the hospital because we need that to draw the initial map, as you might remember. And then what we really need is the two variables that will change all the time. And this is the starting point and this is the destination the patient wants to get to. I here set um, default values. So the starting point is the west entrance. So it's a small W and the uh, destination is house. 17 as an example could also be something else all right so now i also need to define the functions that are basically called by this widget and for that uh, i have two functions one is change destination and the other is change starting point so i only mm -hmm. really implemented the change destination um, that it works functionally the change starting points only prints out the variable and i will explain later why i did it that way but Let's look at the change destination function. So first, okay. it basically overrides the value of the destination variable with the newly selected house. So basically, if I select two, house two, then house two will be written in uh, this destination variable. Then the destination has changed from house 70 to house two, all right? And at the next step, I call a function inside this class which is called redraw map because we want to uh, recreate a map so mm -hmm. and this is basically just a wrap up of all the things we did before so first we draw the initial map with the hospital location then uh, we draw the arm pass uh, also uh, outsourced in a different function and the arm pass again it loads a geojson resource ex extract like the list of all the coordinates and then it just uh, switches the position of the longitude and latitude coordinate and then it calls the on path function and then the on path is displayed on the map and the next okay. step um, then we only need to draw the outline for the outline again uh, we first load the geojson file for the correct house and then we just display it on the map and the last point of this function is basically just uh, showing the map, so displaying the map. Mm -hmm. So now let's go to the widgets. This looks really long, but it's in principle just the uh, really simple example I showed earlier. Here we have all the options, which are basically all the different houses. And then I have all the houses as uh, selection criteria. And what I then also did again is I gave them the options of the three entrants, which are open to the hospital, plus also the uh, Aufnahme, which is where the patients um, get registered. Because these are the four positions I want to support at the beginning. So previous cell, you define how to visualize interactive map, and this current cell, you are creating interactive widget to to make the map more interactive exactly so these widgets basically interact with the navigator class that means if you click a button this function in the navigator class uh, change position is basically executed right so now uh, here is our rudimentary uh, navigation system so first we have the start position and then we have the target position and if I change targets here, for example, to a different house, you see um, it actually works, right? So I can nice. Yes, I can also select like, for example, house 22, which was the example we showed earlier. And you see the outline is present and the unpass is also present. 
Well, this is quite interactive and this would definitely help patient to find the destination. Yeah, so like one other thing is, so I didn't implement like the different entrances yet. But what I did uh, put in this function, which is then called when I change something, is a print function that shows us the values of the two variables, so target and destination. And at the beginning, it's basically default, so west entrance and house 17. If I change here a selection, you see uh, it changes both things. So what you see is basically this navigator class remembers the pre-selection from previous uh, example. I can now also select, I don't know, house 31. And if I switch back to entrance west, you see it still remembers basically this house 31. And this is basically how the interactivity is given. All right. So currently it's, inter it's printing out your selection of starting point and destination, but later on it would reflect on the map showing the path dynamically depending on your selection. Exactly. Well, and currently only for the west entrance starting point is implemented, but in the future, this should react to your decision yeah. selection. And my vision is basically the following. So let's just show the last slide. So basically what I imagine is that um, this uh, application will run as a web application and um, web application are basically called with URLs and you can encode a URL in uh, one of these QR codes. So this QR code is actually a URL, right? So, mm -hmm. and then we basically hand over with this URL um, also the variable for the position of the patient. So that means Inside the URL, uh, we encode a variable which says, okay, this patient scanned the uh, barcode um, or the QR code um, on the west entrances. This patient here scanned the QR code at the north entrance and this uh, patient scanned it at the east entrance, for example. And then the starting point is already pre-selected and then he can just enter the house he wants to go to and basically display it. That looks quite interesting. I'm looking forward to see the real application in the future, near future. Yeah. So um, there are still some open points, actually. So one thing is, of course, you need to make a website out of it. But in Python, there are a lot of options you can choose. Like, for example, um, it has a really nice framework called Django where you can also implement a Python code and um, deliver it as a website, right? But on another hand, it's also not like a really navigation system because the real navigation system would take your starting point, your endpoint, and then also uh, calculate maybe the most efficient way to your destination. Is it possible to implement Google-alike navigator? Yeah, so that's my goal for the next video. Uh, basically, um, defining all the passes and then also uh, creating a navigator which can do that, which um, should be quite interesting, hopefully. Well, that would be really exciting to learn how to build such smart navigator. Yeah. I'm looking forward. Yeah, I'm also looking forward to I also heard you're preparing some projects. So what can I look forward to? Oh, well, I'm preparing deep learning tutorial for the beginner um, because it's really um, cutting edge technology, not hard to use, in fact. And um, I'm currently researching on medical image analysis. And I think this would also give some insight for the people who is considering to use deep learning. but I have no idea how to use it. I'll try to make it easy tutorial. So I'm really excited on your tutorial. So last time you really helped me out and I hope um, I can really learn something from it. Thanks a lot for joining me. Thank you for having me.